our weekly market update of the 14th of November of this year. And today we've got RP Data Senior Research Analyst, Analyst Cameron Cusher on the line. So welcome, uh, welcome Cameron. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Now you've been on holidays for a while, mate. I have, yes. It's, well, it feels like it was a long time ago now, but it was only a couple of weeks ago. And if you come back to a market that's red hot, what's happening? <laughs> Uh, it's red hot, but there's certainly signs of improvement in the housing market over the last few months, which is uh, encouraging for everyone involved. And now, what do you think about last week's uh, interest rate decision to remain at 3.25? How do you think that'll impact on the market? Uh, look, I think I wasn't really surprised uh, that the RBA didn't move. Um, the interest rate cuts that you do get tend to take uh, some time to actually filter through to the market. It's not like you get a cut and then the uh, next day you go out and decide you're going to buy a house and buy it that day. So people are going to be more inclined to go and look at houses, go to open homes because of the lower interest rates, but we probably won't see the impact of the lower interest rates for a couple of months. And given we are coming into to Christmas and New Year, it may not be till February or March next year until we see the full impact of, uh, of the rate cut into the data. I still think we've probably got uh, scope uh, down the line for a, a further interest rate cut. But some of uh, what the RBA has been saying certainly suggests that they're not in a hurry to, uh, to lower interest rates any further. And Cameron, now Adelaide, I noticed, was uh, not performing too well in your last set of stats, which we reported on last week. Uh, what's your view of Adelaide versus the rest of the country? Well, Adelaide's always going to be a little bit more volatile on a on a month to month basis because it's got lower volume of sales than, say, a Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane, or Perth. But I think that uh, it's generally following the trend that we're seeing across most markets, and that's a, a slow improvement uh, o over time. So if we have a look. Uh, where Adelaide's at now, so home values have fallen over the year to uh, by 3.5%, and that's certainly a much better performance than we had at the same time last year. So although the trend is still to lower values, the, the rate of decline is slowing, and that's certainly partially impacted by the fact that we have got so many interest rate cuts over the last 12 months, and that uh, and the banks, although they haven't passed on all of it, have been passing some of that through to the uh, th through to the uh, Consumers and, and I did hear the other day that uh, at, at the moment three-year fixed uh, mortgage rates are at their lowest level in 22 years. So there's some good opportunities there for people to get in uh, at, at low mortgage servicing costs and and, some, and lock those away for the next years. And we got Toby uh, from Funding Options in the studio with us as well. So um, Toby was just telling us about you know the funding is actually pretty affordable at the moment. Oh, it certainly is, and that's, that's what, how we see it as well. And obviously, uh, with rent still going up, uh, house prices having, having fallen for much of the last two years, it's certainly becoming a lot more attractive for, for potential buyers to get into the market, especially when you consider that most states are offering some sort of incentive for first-home buyers to enter as well. Now, any unemployment issues um, starting to emerge around the country? Uh, not really. We did see a bit of an uh, increase in unemployment rate last uh, month, but it was fairly stable over this month. So, you know, it's still fairly well contained. We're sitting at less than 5.5% unemployment. Um, so most people that want a job do have a job, but obviously the slowdown in the uh, in commodity prices and the, uh, and the mining sector may be a little bit of a cause for concern uh, over the coming months. So you'd, you'd want to keep an eye on that pretty closely. But you've got to keep in, keep in mind that uh, the mining and resources sector only employs about uh, 3 or 4% of the overall workforce of the country as well. Uh, just a quick uh, wrap up. So what's the volumes like in South Australia in particular, volumes of transactions? Uh, what we've seen is a little bit of uh, an improvement in sales volumes over the last few months. So they were declining, but we, we have seen those stabilised. Uh, they're still below the, uh, the five-year average, but uh, it's encouraging to see a little bit of improvement in sales activity. Um, and, and I guess with the lower interest rates, we would expect that uh, the improvement will continue over the coming months. Obviously, through uh, December and January, volumes will be fairly low, so we try not to look into those trends too much. And, and what's the stock level looking like? Uh, stock levels, uh, it's about eight and a half months worth of supply on the market in Adelaide at the moment. So that's, that's reasonably high, but the encouraging news is that we have seen uh, the number of new listings actually lower than at the same time last year, about 19% lower than the same time last year. And total listings are about 5.5% lower than at the same time last year. So we all remember that last uh, spring wasn't a, a particularly strong uh, period for the housing market. So conditions are certainly looking a little more rosy now than they were at the same time last year, which is a good thing. 
and how are we comparing in South Australia with our average discount on asking price? Uh, discounting levels are, are still relatively high, so you're looking at about 7.5% okay. uh, discount for properties in, in uh, South Australia, and they're taking in excess typically of about 70 days to sell. So they are taking quite a while to sell. The time on market has eased a little bit from the same time last year and has been easing over recent months, whereas the discounts at a similar level. So it suggests that uh, people realise that uh, the market's no longer going up and they're getting a little bit more flexible uh, on their prices, which is, uh, which is encouraging for, for all parties concerned. Um, Cameron, your prediction into the future, how do you think next year looks? Oh, look, I think next year's certainly going to be better than the last couple of years. Uh, lower interest rates will really drive that, but I'm not forecasting a, a significant rebound in values like what we got in uh, 2009, 2010. I think any, any recovery in the market is going to be slow and steady. Uh, we saw today that uh, consumer confidence came out and was, uh, was surprisingly good. Uh, so consumer sentiment perhaps is starting to turn around and, and if that can be sustained, uh, that should lead to, to more sales and more activity in the housing market. But as I said, it's going to be a slow and steady pace and um, it, it could take 12 to 18 months. But I certainly do think that we will see values rise slightly over the next 12 months. All right, so Cameron, you're, in, you're at your dinner table. It's Christmas Day. You're talking to your closest family that you love and you're giving them advice. Are you telling them to buy, sell, buy investments? What are you telling them at the dinner table on Christmas Day? Uh, look, my advice would be buy investment properties uh, based on the rental income, not on the negative gearing benefits. And I think that's where you can uh, have your best opportunities in the current market. Uh, you know, if people don't already own a property, I'd suggest that uh, there's probably uh, not much, there's not going to be much better time than right now to, to go and get into the market. Great advice. Thank you very much, Cameron. We'll catch up with you in a fortnight. Thanks, Anthony. That wraps up our, our weekly market report.